everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the books I read in April and May. I highly recommend all of these books and they're in no particular order. In April and May I read a total of 30 books. I read 9 books in April and 21 books in May. I'm not going to talk about all of the books here. If you want to know all the books I read you can just click the link to my Goodreads down in the description and just because I don't talk about a book here that doesn't mean I did not enjoy the book. I would also love to hear about some of the books you've been reading so make sure to comment those down below. I'm starting off with Broken Strings by Eric Walters and Kathy Kaser. Shirley has auditioned for the lead role in the school play Fiddler on the Roof, Shirley is crushed to find out that she doesn't get this role and instead she is given the role of the Jewish mother. Shirley will still put her all into this role and one plus is that the father is a very cute boy in school and Shirley thinks Ben is very cute. One day Shirley is visiting her grandfather and she goes up into the attic to look for costumes for their school play and she comes across an old poster and a broken violin. Shirley thinks this is very strange because she has never known her grandfather to play music. She takes this down to her grandfather and he gets very angry and upset at her and this scares Shirley because she has never seen him this way before. Over the course of this story, Shirley discovers things about her grandfather that she never knew and she gets to know him in a way that she never thought even existed. This was such a powerful story and it was told in such a beautiful way. I love seeing the growth in Shirley's grandfather and how he was he able to heal from the things he experienced so long ago, but not only the growth in Shirley's grandfather, but it was super cool to see the growth in all the characters that were brought into the story. When Crickets Cry by Charles Martin. At the beginning of the story, we are introduced to a girl named Annie and she is selling lemonade to be able to afford a new heart because without it, she will die very soon. We are also introduced to a man named Reese. He is in town and he buys some lemonade from Annie. He comes to town very rarely. Annie ends up getting hit by a car and Reese is the only person that is able to keep Annie alive until the ambulance arrives and Reese doesn't want anybody to know who he is because he is hiding from his true identity. Reese is a man who loved his wife since childhood. She also had a heart problem and was on the list to get a new heart but didn't make it and so Reese is still grieving the loss of her among other things and this allows Reese to connect to Annie because of similar things that he's gone through in life, including his wife and her heart problem. I get that I'm being brief and not giving a lot of details, but I think the best way to read this story is to go in knowing very little. This was such a powerful story and it was told in such a sweet way. I also read this book for the Buzzwordathon by Books and Lala for April and the prompt for April was an emotion in the title and the emotion I used was cry. Taylor's Gift by Todd and Tara Storch. When Taylor was 13, in 2013, she went on a skiing trip with her family. She had a skiing accident and she didn't survive. Her family was given the option to donate her organs and even though they had never talked about it, they agreed because they knew that it was something Taylor would have done. Taylor loved making a difference in the lives of others. In this book, Todd and Tara share about the grief they walked through and how they healed and also how they had to walk through grief with their other two children as well. They also included stories of the people who had received Taylor's organs and how it made such a difference in the life of every single person who received one of Taylor's organs. Todd and Tara also share about the things that they have been doing in honor of Taylor. This was such a powerful story. In This Moment by Gabrielle Meyer. This is the second book in the Timeless series and the first book is When the Day Comes. Maggie has three lives. One of her lives is in 1861. She's the father of a senator and they are on the edge of the Civil War. Maggie has to navigate spies and wounded soldiers, all while trying not to change the course of history by acting too soon or performing medical procedures that 1861 is not aware of. In 1941, she is a nurse and her and her sister have the opportunity to go to Pearl Harbor. Maggie knows this attack is going to happen and there is nothing she can do about it and she can't tell anybody about it with the chance that she could change history and forfeit this path. In 2001, she is a medical student on her way to becoming a surgeon. In each path, she falls for someone and she has to decide whether it is the right time to get into a relationship knowing that two of her paths will be gone so soon. On her 21st birthday, Maggie must choose which path she will keep and which two she will forfeit. She has just over eight months left to choose and she has no idea which one she will choose. She feels like she can make a difference in whatever path she chooses and her marked parents from 1941 tell her to not choose a path out of obligation to anything or anyone. I really love this story. This book fully lived up to my expectations after 
after what I had from reading the first book. There were some twists that I didn't see coming and I felt that they added to the story so much. Historical fiction is one of my favorite genres and I found it really neat to be able to look at these events in history, the Civil War, World War I, and the 9-11 attack from a character in a story who kind of knew what was going to happen but not fully. I thought that was really cool to have those perspectives which is a perspective you don't often get in historical fiction. I'm really looking forward to the third book. Retractions, Cultivating Humility After Humiliation by Pat Nemers. Pat Nemers writes about many of his life experiences and what he has learned from them. He wrote about his failures and the mistakes that he made and how he went in making them right with people whether they were complete strangers or people that he had known for years. He doesn't only write about his own humiliation to being humble, but he also challenges us to have humility as well. Pat Nemers is also a pastor, so something he talked quite a bit about was not adding or taking away from God's word, and that's something I really appreciated, someone who tries their best to preach and teach God's word and not take or add anything to it. Pat Nemers says, one of my favorite extra biblical statements on legalism comes from John MacArthur. A human standard might be more lenient than scripture or more restrictive than scripture, but it can never be better than scripture. And then he says, human nature struggles to let God be God or let the Bible say what the Bible says. Human nature loves to go beyond the word of God. When priding myself on being a Bible guy, I became what author Larry Osborne calls an accidental Pharisee. I unintentionally added human reasoning to several things God had already addressed in scripture and only as clearly as he saw fit. Pat Nemer shares his experience when he was adding things into scripture or not having views that were based on scripture. He shared how he humbled himself and repented of those beliefs and actions and how people came into his life and showed him and told him these things and helped him get back on the right path. Pat Nemers also says that we have to stop placing personal standards on the same level as scripture. I really enjoyed this book. It was so encouraging and there are so many things to learn about being humble. As well, there are many good conversations that you can have with people about topics that Pat Nemers addresses in this book. This was a book I read for the Intentional by Grace reading challenge and the category I put it in was humility. Dark Clouds, Deep Mercy, Discovering the Grace of Lament by Mark Rograw. This book is designed to help you discover the grace of lament. Lamenting is how we bring our sorrows to God. This allows us to vocalize our pain, and by vocalizing our pain, we can have a deeper relationship with God by being honest with him because he already knows our thoughts anyways. In the book, we go through psalms and lamentations and see how they are laments to God. I truly believe that lamenting is so important, and this is something I have learned over the years, and I truly wish I would have known about this six years ago. Through my struggles, I have learned that it is okay to lament to God to be completely honest with him. Our struggles are not a surprise to him. There are so many scriptures in the Bible where lamenting takes place, so that just shows us that people in the Bible also lamented to God. Lamenting is important, but it is also important to move on from lamenting to trust in God. Mark says, Hurting people are given permission to grieve, but not aimlessly or selfishly. The biblical language of lament is able to redirect weeping people to do what is true despite the valley they are walking through. You know the kinds of books where people wish, what book do you, what do you wish you would have had years ago? This is the book I wish I would have had years ago. I just want to end this review with a quote. Choosing to trust through lament requires that we rejoice without knowing how all the dots connect. We decide to let God be his own interpreter, trusting that somehow his gracious plan is worked out, even if we can't see it. On this side of the cross, we have a real advantage we need to embrace. We know that the ultimate cry, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Psalms 22, 1, led to the greatest moment of redemption. The darkness of the sixth hour led to the draw of the empty tomb. Jesus' life of lament led to salvation and eternal life. We know the full story of salvation. In Romans 8, the Apostle Paul applies this hardship by wrapping suffering in the promises of God's redemptive plan. He lists the trials that the Christians face. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? Romans 8.35. And then he quotes the complaint of the lament, lament psalm. Yet for your sake, we are killed all the day long and we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. Psalms 44, 22. 
On either side of trials and lament stand sweeping promises connected to God's eternal plan. In other words, promises don't end the pain, but they do give it purpose. And this was also the book that I read for Intentional by Grace's reading challenge, and the category I put it in was a book of prayers. Passion and Purpose by Susan Martin Miller. This is the story of Jim Elliot. Jim Elliot is a missionary and he felt God calling him and the other men that he worked with to go and share the gospel with the Aka tribe in Ecuador all while the wives stayed back at the missionary base. This tribe ended up killing all five men, which they knew going in was a possibility. And this isn't a spoiler in the book because this is what Jim Elliot was famous for. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to read this book is because I knew that Jim Elliot was killed as a missionary, but I didn't really know much else about his story. It was also really interesting to read how this tribe was impacted from these men coming to see them, but that is not something I'm going to share because that would be a spoiler in the book. This book allowed me to read all of Jim Elliot's life from his time in college to after college when he was trying to figure out the direction of his life, when he already thought where he knew his relationship with Elizabeth was going, to going on the mission field, to how much planning went into going to see the Aka tribe, and many more things that I did not know before reading this book. I found this book very informative and I would recommend it if you're interested in learning more about the life of Jim Elliot. Saving Mrs. Roosevelt by Candace Sue Patterson. Shirley is very bored having to sit at home while her brothers are off serving in the war. Shirley wants to do something more than just sit around, but the options for women to serve are very limited. Shirley's father does not like this idea that Shirley has and he is very happy having Shirley at home. Shirley's friend Joan finds out that the Coast Guard has opened a new branch for women and they both enlist eager to do their part for the war. Though Shirley is very disappointed that her and Joan will be sent to different training camps, Shirley still tries to do her best. Joan is being sent to a camp where they excel in math and science. After Shirley is finished her training, she has been sent home on a dishonorable discharge that is false and only Shirley knows it's false because there is someone in her hometown who is conspiring to hurt Mrs. Roosevelt and Shirley is sent home because the people feel that they can trust her since she is not a stranger. This hurts Shirley's reputation not only in her town but with her family as well and she's determined not to tell anyone the truth of why she is truly home. This was a very engaging and well-written story. Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. Lina's mother's dying wish is for Lina to go to Italy and visit her father. Lina is very confused because she has never met her father and wonders now why he would want to be a part of her life after 16 years. Lina gets to Italy and discovers that her father is the keeper of the cemetery and that he also lives in the cemetery. While Lina is in Italy, she also is given a journal of her mother's that her mother wrote when she was in Italy years ago. As Lina reads the journal, she discovers secrets about her mother's life, but not only her mother's life, but about her life and her father's life as well. Lina also meets Ren, who is a great help in helping her uncover her mother's secrets as they get to know each other better. This was a really sweet story. The Sweetness of Forgetting by Kristen Harmel. Hope is 36 and her life isn't where she thought it would be. Her mother died of breast cancer, her husband left her, her bank account is nearly depleted, she's raising a moody preteen, and her grandmother currently is in the process of getting Alzheimer's. One day, Hope is visiting her grandma and her grandma is having a good day and she gives Hope this list. On this list are a list of names and her grandma asks her to go to Paris and find out what has happened to these people. Also on the list of names are when the people are born. Hope's grandma knows that if Hope doesn't go to Paris, the past will be erased and replaced with the lies that she has been living for years and years and turned into decades. Hope doesn't want to go because she thinks that her grandma might not know what she is talking about, but Hope eventually realizes that she needs to go and find out the truth. This was such an incredible and heartwarming story. I also just wanted to talk about all the books I read for the Southern Readathon that was hosted by book lover Amanda on YouTube and five others. I will make sure to tag her channel and all of these five channels down below. I'm going to talk about the books I read from least favorite to favorite. There were four books that I rated four stars and five books that I rated five stars. So I greatly enjoyed all of these books. All the Fixins, a book in multiple genres. So I read Saving Mrs. Roosevelt by 
by Candace Sue Patterson. I just talked about it in this video, so if you missed it, you can click the timestamp. This book was historical fiction. There was also a bit of romance. There was also a bit of spy fiction, which can also tie in to historical fiction, but can also be part of its own genre as well. Chicken and Dumplings, a book you think will be a comfort read. I read Taylor's Gift by Todd and Tara Storch. I also talked about this, so there is a timestamp for this. I put this book in this category because I found it so comforting that these people were able to connect with the people who got Taylor's organs, and it was probably also so comforting for Todd and Tara to connect with the people who got Taylor's organs as well. Hot as Blue Blazes, a book with a hot setting. I read A Distant Shore by Karen Kingsbury. This book takes place in Belize, and just to briefly talk about it, Jack is vacationing in Belize and Eliza lives in Belize. They encounter each other and both have a terrifying moment that changes their lives forever. Ten years later, Jack is undercover with the FBI and Eliza is still hid away by her father who is trying to force her into marriage so that he can become more powerful. And during this time, Jack and Eliza meet again and once again, their lives are both at stake. Bless your heart, an emotional or heartwarming read. I read The Sweetness of Forgetting by Kristen Harmel. There is a timestamp in the description, and I truly thought this was an emotional and heartwarming read. Heavens to Betsy, a mystery or thriller that will shock you. I read Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. Just to briefly talk about the book, Adam and Amelia are really struggling in their marriage, and Amelia won a weekend away at this little church that's now basically like an Airbnb through work. So her and Adam go to this little church to spend the weekend with the hopes of fixing their marriage. Adam puts all of his time into writing and he also has face blindness. That means he can't recognize his friends, family, or even his wife. And that doesn't work out very well for him because he saw the person who killed his mother. But because he doesn't recognize the person who did it, they will never be convicted. Each year, the couple exchange traditional wedding gifts like paper, cotton, wood, and Adam's wife writes a letter to him each year and she has never let him read any of the letters, but this will be the first year that she ever lets him read one of the letters. Adam and Amelia know that this weekend away will either fix or break their marriage, but they didn't randomly win this trip. Someone is lying and doesn't want them to live a happily ever after life. And I was truly shocked by this story. Free space, thanks to Southern Hospitality. I read Passion and Purpose by Susan Martins Miller. There's also a timestamp for this book. Sweet Tea, a book with something sweet on the cover or a sweet story. I read Love and Gelato by Jenna Evans Welch. There is also a timestamp for this. And the sweet thing on the cover was ice cream. Howdy Partner, a book featuring family or friendship. I read Broken Strings by Eric Walters and Kathy Kasser. I also left a timestamp for this book. This ma book mainly features a granddaughter and her grandfather, but also there are other family members in this story as well. And then Hey Y'all, a book with more than one point of view. I read the book In This Moment by Gabrielle Meyer. This is the second book in a series I love. It will definitely be in my top books of 2023. And there are three different points of view and they are told by the same character. And if you haven't checked out my review on this book, you definitely need to go and click the timestamp in the description. Thanks for watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure to comment some of your recent reads down below. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any future videos I post. And also feel free to share this with anyone that you think might enjoy it. Thanks for watching!